in Israel. Mahoney also had the privilege to speak with the Prime Minister. Although seen by most as a political figure, Benjamin Netanyahu was also an author and historian like his father. Tell me about the effect the Exodus has had upon civilizations in the last 3,000 years. Moses was uh, the greatest revolutionary of all time. Remember that in antiquity there were grand empires that were based on one principle, and that is slavery. Uh, and Moses uh, challenged that twice. He challenged it by taking his people who were slaves in bondage in Egypt and freed them, and took them to their promised land. But he also challenged it by providing a code, a moral code, for mankind that said that um, it is not the king or the emperor that decides the law. There's a higher law. And that higher law means respect for your fellow man. And it also means that you have to be free. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, Judaism didn't uh, uh, make its way so rapidly and didn't uh, 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 spread in the ancient world is that it premised its conception that you had to be a free man and not a slave to espouse Judaism. Now, these were absolutely revolutionary ideas. Uh, and it's the combination of the physical freedom, physically freeing the slaves from Egypt, but also ennobling them to a higher code of um, personal dignity, respect for your fellow man, and personal freedom that was so uh, at odds with uh, the ancient world. And this shone a light, and that light uh, progressively uh, expanded and reached uh, larger and larger sections of, uh, of uh, humanity until it became the dominant code by which we live, or at least aspire to live. The power of the Exodus was also felt by a man who was oppressed by the Soviet Union in the middle of the last century. Natan Sharansky, the Soviet dissident whose defiance of communist leaders won him world acclaim in his quest for human rights. His perseverance under hardship was recognized with the Congressional Gold Medal, as well as the Presidential Medal of Freedom. But in the beginning, he was a man who barely knew of his Jewish roots. Well, I was born in the Soviet Union. I was uh, absolutely assimilated Soviet Jew because that was the policy of the uh, Soviet communist regime to deprive people of their identity, of their religion, of their nationality. Uh, and uh, uh, I was absolutely helpless in my attempts to, to live as a free person in the Soviet Union. We knew practically nothing about our tradition, about our history, about our holidays, and we knew that we are Jews because there is anti-Semites because there is official anti-Semitism. There are official restrictions put on you and you, and that's all. So it was all negative. Nevertheless, when the message came from Jerusalem, when we heard Har Habayt Baideno, the Temple Mount is in our hands, and I had no idea what Temple Mount means, but I could see how all the world started treating me differently. That's when we felt this mystical connection between us and that land and that city. And in fact, what kept us Jewish for 3,000 years? Not the fact that Soviet Union was an anti-Semitic system, but the fact that all my ancestors for 3,000 years, for 2,000 years of exile, were praying next year in Jerusalem. And every day, three times a day in their prayers, we were mentioning Jerusalem. That's what kept us as one people. I found strength when uh, the very strong message came in 1967 from the State of Israel, which was fighting for its right to exist, but also for the dignity of Jews all over the world, and we felt it. And then I became the activist of two movements, of uh, Soviet Jewry movement for our right for Exodus, to leave Soviet Union to go to Israel, and the human rights movement of the Soviet Union. Uh, as a Jew who wanted to go back to your roots, we were studying Hebrew in underground because many people went to prison only for being 
Hebrew teachers. We were studying the history of Exodus, the history of our people, also in the underground. And then we were organizing demonstrations, a successful demonstration of five, seven people standing in the center of Moscow with the slogans, uh, let us go to Israel. And after two or three minutes, you're arrested. Uh, I was an official spokesman of the two movements of human rights movement and Jewish immigration movement, which means I had to keep contact between the activists of the movement and foreign press, what was, of course, illegal. After every meeting with the journalists, you're arrested, you're interrogated, you're warned, and so on. And uh, so we tried to keep the world informed about what was happening with those who wanted to leave Soviet Union for Israel, or those who are trying to live as free people in the Soviet Union. For my activity as a dissident, I was arrested in 1977, was accused to be in, be, in betraying the motherland and spying for America. I spent nine years in Gulag, and of course during all these years, uh, KGB, the secret police of the Soviet Union, is trying to break, break the spirit of political prisoner and to force him to say that they are right, their ideology is right, and that we are wrong. That's all the game. They know I made no crimes. They know I have no secrets. All my activity was public. But it was important for the stability of this regime that uh, not one person in that country will be free and will be independent and will say what he wants and will do what he wants. So uh, they tried very hard to break, uh, break my spirit. I spent more than 400 days in the punishing cell in very tough conditions, which is like ki kind of torture by hunger and cold. Uh, I spent many years without any communication, without knowing what's happening. Uh, with my family and family not knowing what's happening uh, with me. Uh, I spent uh, five years in solitary confinement. Uh, but I knew all these years that my people are fighting for me, that my country is fighting for me, and that uh, God is with me. That's what was giving me a lot of strength. <laughs> When was the moment when I felt myself strong enough to raise my voice against my being in that country, my being as a slave, and the others being as slaves? That was the moment when I realized that after all, I belong to that history of Exodus. In fact, what is happening with us it's the continuation of the story of Exodus from Egypt. And it was, we knew very little about our history, but it was so easy for us to imagine this station. It was so clear for us who is Pharaoh of today and what is Egypt of today mm -hmm. and uh, what mean all these forces of KGB who we are uh, with us practically every day and every minute of our activity. So I felt myself as an active participant of Exodus, and then you, because we succeeded 3,000 years ago, we will succeed today. If we think of Joseph being like Israel and the other nations being the brothers, uh, there's, there's a gift which I believe that Israel has for the world, uh, a, a role to play. This is where the Bible came from, from these people. Well, it's, it's not been without its burdens, as you know. Uh, chosen people, but chosen for um, uh, redemption, surely, but through, uh, <laughs> there is no redemption without suffering. And so we've certainly had our share of suffering. Uh, but I, I believe that um, uh, just as Israel, the people of Israel in antiquity and in modern times stood against the most uh, intolerant forces uh, on the planet, and in modern times, uh, Nazism, we now are the chosen target, the target of choice of another mad militancy that seeks to extinguish the light of freedom that we all hold dear, and that is uh, 
this mad Islamic militancy. Sure, they want to destroy us, but in many ways they want to destroy the, the uh, free uh, democratic world that has been built on the foundations of our common history and our common values. Uh, we're just the first and most symbolic point on their, on their march. And so the future of freedom uh, is again tested here uh, in the Jewish land uh, and uh, by the Jewish people. And I think that it's not surprising that in this battle we enjoy the support of those who understand that a larger battle is being waged, the, the battle of uh, our common values of freedom against the forces of darkness.